Hey, good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Hey, we're back up here getting a little bit more wood. I got my son on the uh, L3301 Dakota. I got my brother-in-law and his friend Walter who owns the property. And we're picking up some of these larger rounds and getting one in front of the dump trailer. That's old Walter in there on the trailer unhooking the unhooking the skidding tongs. Right. Be coming back for some more abuse here in just a second. Now there might be some of you guys that are thinking, well, why don't you just go ahead and use the parts? You know, you don't have to do any handling of them at all. Well, we have to place those in there. And if you ever use skidding tongs on a choker like that, you'll know that you can just use one hand and you can swing, you know, three, four, 500 pound chunks of uh, wood right in and put them in position exactly where you want with little or no effort. If you're putting them on the parts, you have to actually manhandle them to get, get them onto the parts. If you don't want to just gouge up the dirt and everything, and you actually have to manhandle them to slide them off of the parts. Um, and whenever you do, it kind of dislodges the pile and everything. With the skin tones, you can just set stuff in there, nestle it in there almost perfect with a very little, little to no effort at all. Now, when we get to the rear of the trailer, we will go ahead and set the last couple of rows in with the parts. But uh, that's because we'll take the ramps off. The tractor no longer gets up high enough uh, to get up there to it. You know what I mean? And if you're wondering why we're taking our care to stack them in there, it's because we're so far away from home. This is a, an hour one way just to, uh, dig, to get to the job site. So we want to take advantage of the full load and uh, get as much in there as we possibly can. And uh, stacking them in there is the, bath, the absolute best way of doing it. If you just 
throw them in there willy-nilly like you would with the parts um, is you're not going to get near the load and it's going to be a lot less um, easy to secure or more difficult to secure if it's just thrown in willy-nilly. You'll see as we tie down the load at the end of the, getting this one filled up, you know how we're able to throw straps across and uh, just hold everything in pretty much in place right where we need to have it. Now at the very end of the video, you'll get to see this uh, this new PJ dump trailer that we got. It's an 18,000 pound dump. I think I say that somewhere in the video, but uh, it's an 18,000 pound tandem axle uh, dump trailer. And the old boys told me whenever I bought it that uh, this thing will dump anything you put in it. So we're, we're going about the business today of testing that uh, theory and see if it's fact. So uh, I think you'll enjoy the load, but unfortunately uh, the dumping is right at the very end of the video. Now it's kind of unusual that we're able to get into a, a fella's yard with a tractor and do as much apparent damage as what we're doing, but uh, he's got to have all these big stumps ground out uh, anyway, and he's decided that he's going to have the, the area landscape uh, whenever the project is completely done. So, you know, we don't really want to gouge too awfully bad, but we do have to, uh, but we'll back drag it whenever we get done, and that'll give him a little bit of a, a head start on getting everything uh, landscape the way he wants to end up with it. And I've known Walter since he was in high school, and of course I've known my brother-in-law since he was just a little guy, and Walter and, uh, and my brother-in-law Neil are best friends, so uh, it's through the, the kindness of Walter uh, that we're able to get all this premium wood. Uh, we got the logs last week, and when we get done with today, there's still going to be the two large logs left that we're going to have to figure out how to get on the trailer um, sometime later. And now you can see we're obviously towards the rear of the trailer, so we're using the parks right here. Um, really was thankful for Neil and Walter to chime in there and, and do a lot of that uh, prep work for us. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty rough day for everybody involved, but everybody had a good time. Nobody got hurt, you know, and uh, we got a big old pile of wood out of it. Now, right, right here on this piece, this is a prime example of why I was telling you the skid and tongs are so much better when you're trying to stack the wood. Um, Believe it or not, I got a grunt just a little bit getting that piece off of there. Um, you wouldn't think that it's that hard to slide it off of the metal part. Even though he's raising up and kind of tilting them back, you know, now we still have to slide them all the way forward, keep everything up nice and tight so the load doesn't wobble and everything. So a lot of times you'll have to back up and then nudge forward again with the part and then close up that space in between them or else you end up with a real loose load and that's not good at all. You want everything packed just like load pay, you want everything packed just as tight as you can be or you're going to lose your load, you know. And it makes it a whole lot easier to bind down, too. Here's an extension of that same example. Uh, we're right off to the edge of the trailer. we got to slide that piece off. Now, it probably, is, well, it probably only goes about 160 pounds, 180 pounds at the very, very most. But, you know, we got a brand new trailer here. We don't want that to roll off and smash into that fender down there. There's no reason to do any excessive damage to... Uh, <laughs> Is something you know unless you just absolutely uh, can't avoid it and so we just have to be very very careful if we had a bigger tractor we'd still be loading the back end with the skid and tongs just like we loaded the rest of the load but of course you're limited with the smaller tractors with the uh, with the reach and everything See, we uh, do not like to have the potential for losing anything off the load. The boys are putting the final tie downs on it, and we're getting ready to make a trip with the first load. I'm gonna stay here and cut while uh, while my son's gone making a dump. Like I said, that's an 18,000 pound trailer, so as long as we have 14,000 pounds or less worth of wood material on there, we're in good shape. Well, there goes the first load.
that's at 660 with a 30 inch bar and though I don't show it um, I do have to cut from both sides of it I'm lacking several inches uh, probably about a good six inches or better of getting through uh, through so I got to cut the other side but it's boring just watching chainsaws so I pretty much cut that stuff out you know just make it so you can see exactly what we have to do but not every second it takes to do it and you'll you'll see too here whenever uh, I get make this cut we're gonna hook onto it with that log dog and roll those guys up on edge and you're gonna see a big old branch man I think that thing was probably 18 inches or so in diameter is broke off and actually jammed down in the ground so that's actually a big Y right there that I'm working on. And also the diameter that is makes that cut look kind of narrow when Walter rolls it out of there. But that's, that's a 16 inch cut. That kind of gives you an idea of, um, <laughs> of the size of that material. Now Walter's a, he's a husky guy, but uh, he kind of fallen in love with my brother-in-law's 271 steel. And so right here I give him an opportunity to use that 660 and see what he seems to uh, think about it. So at the end of the cut, he'll voice his opinion quite emphatically at uh, what he thinks about this, about this saw. Now unfortunately by the time I got around to handing him the saw, the, uh, it was needing a little bit of a touch up. It's not cutting the absolute best in the world right now. Um, I really should have stopped and, and hit it just a lick or two with the file, but uh, no matter. Uh, a little bit later on when we get working up on the big end of this, and by the way, these are the smallest end, the small end of that uh, large log, but I uh, run into a nail up on the other end and really, really take care of my chain, so it was done far after that. But he's still got a little bit to go, and then we'll see what he's got to say about that old 660. Right here you can hear the throaty sound of Walter's old husky back there in the in the back. He's trimming up some of the odd things, odd the odd branches off of some of the smaller rounds just to make them stack a little better. See, back to the fork idea, uh, in, instead of the skin tones, a piece like this one right here is going to go five to 650 pounds. Um, 
and you don't want to be manhandling these things, you know, by hand if you don't have to. So you may as well just use a skid and tongue and put them exactly where they need to rest with very minimum amount of effort. Well, you guys know I'm not real fancy at this editing, but what I tried doing is I tried using my iPhone up here on the trailer while Tyler's bringing me the, the rounds up, and then uh, I spliced it into the actual footage off the Nikon camera uh, in the order in which we were loading them. At least I tried to do that, like this here is the back of what you just saw, you know, coming up on the trailer and et cetera, et cetera, on through the, uh, on through the video. Now, being one that's not known for running away from hard work, you can see the fruits of Walter's labor there in the left-hand side of the picture. Uh, that's already some 24-inch rounds that he split by hand and stacked off ready for his fire pit, you know, over the course of the summer. That was right around here where my cart filled up and my camera shut off and I did not catch it until, well, a little bit too late to get the, the full second load on film. Now we're using the same old trick to go ahead and change the direction of those bigger logs, um, except we're using a boat, of course, for the power source, much better than that little old wind. And uh, here in just a second, we found out that uh, our wedge was a little bit too small. We had to put a bigger block there to get it from running over top of the wedge. What we're doing while we're here with the tractor, we're trying to shift those bigger logs in position, uh, the right angle for us to go into the alleyway to load them onto the trailer, either on the side or by pulling up over the rear. Guys always wonder what their little Kubotas are capable of. This is a 3301. It's not really a little Kubota, but it's, it's still in the compact factor uh, genre. push the other end farther around before we go much farther. We had to change and put a much larger brake down here on this end. Well, they claim this trailer is rated at 18,000 pounds, so that I'm assuming that's about a 14,000 pound load. Uh, you know, that is capable of dumpling, which would be seven, seven tons of, of weight. So, uh, as you can tell, this ain't too bad of a load. I don't know how much is there, but it's a good amount. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure this thing does what, it, uh, what it's advertised to do. Now that little bit of hesitation there kind of had me concerned at first, but then I realized they more than likely have a two-stage pump on this thing, because they definitely have an adequate cylinder under there, and it's somewhat of a cantilever lift is, is what I think they call it. Uh, so it's got plenty of uh, capability, but uh, once it raised up a little bit, you know, I was a little more relieved and figured, well, you know, we're good to go. 
So everything was going well, uh, dumped real good and everything, but you're gonna see us come to a stop right up here. Um, I'll tell you exactly when we stopped because I actually cut it out because it took us a little bit of time. But here, right about now we stopped. See the tailgate on the other side come flying down? It somehow or another came dislodged, so we had to stop and tie it back. The pin came loose, I think. Well, I guess we can verify that uh, that the trailer is going to do what it's advertised to do because uh, I don't know how much weight that was, but it has to be eight or 9,000 pounds at least. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with it so far. So you can tell right here from this point all the way back, all the fresh cut wood, this is two trailer loads with that PJ trailer. And you know what? This track man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.